He says, I have a subscription on Amazon for the Anderson's human char, which can change humic and biochar. I hope you cover either one of those in 2024 so I can possibly save some more money and reduce junk. <laughs> I will cover humic acid <clears throat> for sure. Biochar is another issue. Biochar is an immensely complex and variable um, topic, the type of wood, the length of pyrolysis, the I mean, the particle size, there's all sorts. I mean, it's biochar is a, is a, there's a lot going on with biochar. I'm not comfortable with that topic, to be honest. Humic acid is a different one. Humic acid will probably be a month on humic acid at some point. Yeah. There's a lot of good information on turf grasses on humic acid. I would say in general, the, both those topics of humic acids and biochar in general are greatly oversold. You have to keep in mind, it's not complicated. It's really not that complicated, guys. It's much more complicated to keep people employed and to keep people, your bills paid and to keep all the creditors happy and all this lights on. That's difficult. People management, leadership, that's difficult. The turf grass is not that challenging. Oftentimes marketing and manufacturers and distributors, they want to make it complicated and make it, make it difficult to understand because they want to try to convince you that they, they, you need to buy their product. It's basic blocking and tackling, guys. Water, light, temperature. When it comes to soil, it's nitrogen is almost always needed. I mean, I'm not going to say always, and there's, but almost always nitrogen is going to be needed to achieve some desired quality that is not existing at the moment. And then after that, after nitrogen, very little is usually needed. Occasionally, you might need a little phosphorus occasionally. Occasionally, very rarely, you might need to apply some foliar iron if you want a little pop in color or something. But all these other products and these, they're all trying to find a niche in the market to, to, to get their product, like humic, humic um, coated urea. They're trying to find a niche in the market to kind of corner something because why urea is a commodity no one makes any money on urea it's bought and sold on the open market so they're trying to find like a, a unique sales pitch or a unique product that is, is proprietary to them that, that you can only get it from them so they have something unique to sell there's something different that's not a commodity that's how the game is played in turf grass so i was in sales for six years guys that's what that's what salesmen want they want a unique product that only they have because they know you, they know you can buy urea from anybody. You can buy ammonium sulfate from anybody. It doesn't have to be just from them. They, you know, so these these ideas that like humic acid and, and biochar and all these other things. I'm not going to say you won't ever see a positive response to them. Occasionally, hit and miss here and there, you might find something. But don't get lost. Keep your eyes focused on the basics, the fundamentals of agronomy: water, light temperature pests those key foundational subjects and topics are what's going to win championships if you want to if you have all that dialed in and you want to play with some human char you want to play with some humic acid you want to play with all these other things then, then you know that's your money i'm not going to say don't do it there's not a lot of evidence to support most of that stuff but if you have things dialed in and you're good and tight with all the water and light stuff, then who am I to say don't go test it? You know, you go go try it if you want to try it. You want to put a little icing on your cake? Then it's not you know I'm not here to say don't do it. But I would not do that before I have my agronomic program dialed in to to the to the point where it's agronomically and economically as efficient as I can make it. <laughs>